There are different types of proximal femoral fractures and we need to know how to classify them to choose better treatment and predict outcomes. One of the simplest classification of femoral neck fractures is anatomical classification. It shows which part of the proximal femur is fractured. So we have a head, femoral neck, trochanteric area, which has greater trochanter and lesser trochanter, and fractures of femoral neck can be divided into subcapital fractures when the fracture line goes under the femoral neck. The fracture line can go in the middle of the femoral neck. It would be so-called transcervical fractures. And the fracture can go at the basis of the cervical neck. It would be a basic cervical fracture or intertrochanteric fracture. It is possible when the fracture goes between the trochanters with this forming pertrochanteric fractures or intertrochanteric fractures. Also, lesser trochanter and greater trochanter can be fractured as well. And if the fracture line goes under trochanteric area, we have so called subtrochanteric fracture. The next classification that we can use is Powell's classification. It was introduced by Frederick Powell's and it respects the stability of fracture fragments. So we need AP view to determine the fracture type. We have three types. For type one, we have a fracture lay, which is forming an angle less than 30 degrees. So these fractures considered to be stable. For these fractures, we can predict good healing and these fractures are good for internal fracture fixation. If we're talking about type two fractures, the fracture line is more vertical already. It is forming the angle of 30 to 50 degrees to the horizontal plane. These fractures are less stable and the healing is not so good. For vertical fractures, we have a very intensive shear stress on the fracture side. Due to these, we can expect a higher rate of unhealing and a septic necrosis of the femoral head after the fracture was internally fixed with some implants. So as you see, the Paulus classification is quite practical classification. It helps us to see the results of our treatment and to choose the better management. So if we have a type one or type two fractures, we can fix them internally with fixators. If we have type three fractures and the age of patient is older than 65, we should better go with a hip arthroposty, unipolar or total. So the next classification that we are going to discuss with you is so-called guardian classification. It has four stages. The first stage is a fracture which is not completed. It goes on the partial part of the femoral neck and it is not displaced. The second type we have fracture which goes through the whole femoral neck but fragments are on its place and we expect 
good healing for both types. For the third type, we have already some displacement. And the fourth one has the lowest rates of healing. It is full or completed fracture with full displacement. So as you see, for first type, we can use a bed rest for six weeks and six weeks working with crutches with partial weight bearing. The second and third type can be repaired by internal fixation with screws. And for this fourth type, uh, we can use screws for internal fixation if it is young patient, but if it, but if it is old patient, we should go with hip arthroplasty. This is a O classification, which is considered to be a universal classification for proximal femoral fractures. This is a femur segment, it's a three. So if it is 31, we understand that this is a proximal part of femur. And it has several types, A, B, and C. So A, it's extra articular fracture, B is a fracture which partially involving the joint. And C, it is a fracture of the articular surface. So actually the fracture of the femoral head. If we will talk about fractures of B group, these are fractures of femoral neck, which are subcapital, a transcervical fracture of femoral neck, and basic cervical fractures. These fractures uh, can be fixed internally with screws. If we go to the uh, A group, these are fractures of trochanteric areas, which are pertrochanteric fractures involving larger trochanter, greater trochanter, so to choose the treatment, we should classify our fractures first. And for medial fractures, when fracture line goes in the area of subcapital part or is it transcervical fracture, we can perform internal fracture fixation. The first device that was used for these was so-called Smith-Patterson nail. But nowadays, we use cannulated screws with partial thread on the tip. And we use two screws or three screws for better fixation. If we are talking about young patients, and according to the Pauls, first type and second type, we can perform this type of fixation. If we are talking about patients, which are older than 65, and we have vertical type of fracture, we should better go to the total or unipolar hip replacement. So the first device that was used for unipolar hip replacement was Moore prosthetic device. The head of femur was replaced only. The stem was fixed in the canal. There are two types of fixation possible by means of cement or without cement. Nowadays, we don't use more prosthetic devices a lot, but use nowadays uh, double cup prosthetic devices when we have two articulated surfaces, one between big head and acetabulum and another between a small head and polyethylene inside. The advantage of this unipolar prosthetic device is a short operation time, which is essentially important for fragile and very old patients. Total hip prosthetic device gives us better functional results, but we should replace acetabulum and the head. So actually we're replacing two components. The stem 
can be fixed with a cement or without cement. And acetabulum is fixed with a cement as well. Uh, we have better functional results, but the time for surgery is needed longer. If we're talking about lateral fractures, these are intertrochanteric fractures or basic cervical fractures. They need more powerful device to fix it properly. So we can use sliding hip screw when there is a plate which is fixed with the screws the shaft and the screw which is sliding in this plate. So this screw provides uh, a good biomechanical conditions for fracture healing and we can rehabilitate our patients earlier. The the another device which uh, was used before for many years now we don't use it a lot is so-called l-shape blade or angular blade plate which provide good stability for these fractures nowadays we use a hammer nail which is an intermediary nail, which is inserted in the canal of the femur. And the screw, one or two screws, are inserted in the femoral neck. This device is inserted in a minimal razor way. We just make incisions where we insert in, uh, intermediary nail and insert additional screws. So blood loss is decreased for this technique. We can rehabilitate our patients ne almost next day after surgery. And that is very important for all patients. Nowadays, we have a modification of this uh, device, which we call proximal femoral neo anterotational, where the screw was replaced with a blade. This blade can provide compression of the fracture site and provides very good stability as well. In the distal part, it is blocked with a screw. So early rehabilitation is possible after internal fixation with this device. So thank you very much for your attention.